my name is Kelly Kebialis and welcome to Hoods, where we explore neighborhoods in Chicago. Today we'll be taking you to Rogers Park, a community on the north side. We're going to be discussing the history of Rogers Park and the changing culture and how the changing culture has shaped the community from its initial development to its current state. We will take you to a number of businesses and venues that have played a great role in the formation of the community. But first, let's take a trip back to the formation of Rogers Park. I'm Alderman of the 49th Ward of Chicago. Uh, I represent uh, primarily the Rogers Park community, which is located on the far north side of the city along the lakefront, uh, just south of Evanston. Rogers Park originally was home to the Potawatomi Indians, and they had lived in this area for centuries. First, uh, white settlers uh, arrived in, uh, in what is now known as Rogers Park in the mid-1800s. A guy named uh, Philip Rogers, for whom Rogers Park was named, was the, the first uh, developer here, first uh, white settler in the area. What is now the CTA, the transit line extended to Rogers Park, bringing more people from outside the city. Began to become home to immigrants, uh, first from Western Europe, and then later on, Eastern Europe and, and Russia. But the neighborhood was always a has always been a neighborhood in transition and so in the 1970s and 1980s a lot of those folks were, were replaced by African Americans and uh, Latinos and people from uh, the Asian subcontinent. So we got to the point where from the 1980s on Rogers Park has become one of the most ethnically, uh, racially and economically uh, diverse communities uh, not only in the city of Chicago, but the entire nation. They should think of it as a microcosm of the city of Chicago and indeed the entire nation. Uh, a neighborhood that is welcoming to people of all backgrounds, all walks of life. A neighborhood that's very tolerant, uh, that embraces uh, uh, differences. We have a lot of unique personalities in our community. We've got a really a, a neat burgeoning arts district and commercial district. Uh, particularly in Morse Avenue and Glenwood, which is sort of downtown Rogers Park. Uh, I don't think there's another neighborhood in Chicago where you have such a feeling of, of neighborhood cohesion and, and people who really look out uh, for each other and who are very involved in our community. Like the Rogers Park community really takes pride in its rich history. Not many communities as largely populated as Rogers Park value or in some instances even acknowledge their deeply rooted history, especially within such a big city like Chicago. Now that we understand how the community began, let's take a look at one of the local businesses that keep it up and running. Here it is, an exclusive look at the Heartland Cafe. <laughs> Uh, you know, the Heartland Cafe actually came out of Columbia College because I was teaching a class called Organizing for Social Change. Uh, I was developing uh, a notion of a mini progressive economy and uh, my notion was you'd have an interconnecting network of, of small businesses that uh, hired people uh, who were politically conscious or were concerned about the world or were becoming that way. It would give them a way to make some money, it would allow them to uh, go out and do their political work, uh, and it would be also a way you serve the community. So, one of the notions was a restaurant. Uh, we raised four grand from family and friends, and we started working on it. So, very soon after we started, we started doing some entertainment. We eventually, a year or so later, we opened a little general store. Uh, we opened a bar. I think that uh, a lot of people came to the neighborhood because they liked that it was kind of diverse. I like to say that we're, we have the most uh, diverse racial, ethnic, religious uh, groups in the country. And I think Chicago is a crucial place to have ended up and I think Rogers Park ends up that way and the Heartland certainly has always promoted the diversity and the coming together of people from everywhere on the planet. We call our food here Wholesome Food for the Mind and Body. And uh, we had all read this book, uh, Diet for a Small Planet, by Frances Moore Lapay. And basically, she says in that book, you cannot meet the world's protein needs on a meat-based diet. Uh, so that was kind of the idea. We always served some chicken. 
We always served some fish. We served a lot of brown rice, we served a lot of beans, we served a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit. That's been the, the, the tradition that's gone forward. It's really a family-friendly place. You have people who came here in the 70s and the 80s whose kids then started coming. So we think that's good because uh, good politics, good food, all those things, uh, they, they cross generational lines and we, uh, we want to keep it going. We certainly view ourselves as a compassionate oriented business. A lot of people will say they're the heart of Rogers Park. That's fine, you know, we get, it's a big heart. And while we would lay claim to being the spot, the heart, uh, you know, there are a lot of places that do good. I hope you guys will come to the Heartland Cafe for the rest of your lives and your kids will too. Hope we'll still be here. Wow, all that food is starting to make me hungry. On a more serious note today, we're lucky to have Dorothy Milne, an active member of the Rogers Park community who has agreed to give us an inside look at what makes Rogers Park a great place to live. Thanks for being here, Dorothy. As we know, you've been actively contributing to the community for a very long time. How have you enjoyed your time in Rogers Park? Well, I don't actually live there, but since I work there, I spend almost all my time there. <laughs> and uh, I love Rogers Park. It's my favorite neighborhood in Chicago. It's uh, got all sorts of uh, art and entertainment venues and it's a very uh, diverse and interesting community. When you think of Rogers Park, what comes to mind? Music and art and uh, diversity. Do you have a favorite thing you like to do in Rogers Park? I other than work. <laughs> other than work. Well, there are about uh, four theaters clustered pretty close together in Rogers Park, so when I'm not actually in my building, I go and see the shows over at the Ubaque or Side Project or some of the others, and we have uh, a bunch of music venues, and I enjoy those too. How does Rogers Park differ from different communities in Chicago? I feel like everyone I meet everywhere <laughs> has lived in Rogers Park at some point in their life. It's some, <laughs> for some reason, it's a real crossroads, and uh, uh, it's an entry point. A lot of new immigrants to the country somehow move to Rogers huh. Park, and it's, uh, it makes our neighborhood especially vital and exciting. Do you have a favorite place that you like to eat in Rogers Park? Mm, well, almost next door to us almost. is, uh, it's called the Noon Hour Grill, but actually it's a Korean restaurant. Mm. And it's, it's, um, it's just delicious. Uh, so that is one of my favorites. <laughs> and then I also like the Morseland over on Sheridan, and there's a new place called Act One uh, Pub. Uh, we have an awesome Mexican restaurant called Los Portales. I love Mexican food. What, mm. do you, what do you order if you go to your favorite restaurant? This is the first one you said. What do you normally order? Oh, at, um, at Susie's, which yes. is what we call Noon Hour Grill, because it's a one-woman operation. She does it all herself. Um, I normally order the bibimbap with tofu. Ooh, sounds, sounds interesting. Everything I, there is great, but it's hard to move off what you love, right. the, your favorite, once That's you find true. one. It's true. So. Well, thank you so much um, for, for talking to me about that. And if I go there, I will definitely try that. It's always great to have an insider's point of view. And thank you, viewers, for watching. I will be back soon to further explore the businesses and venues in Rogers Park that have contributed to its development with a popular Lifeline Theater. Talking, talking, talking.